Thank you for joining me today. And I only wanted to spend time with people who are committed to improving themselves, uh, gaining a new skill set and changing, you know, their own financial destination and also the others that they love them. That's super important, right? Because it, it takes each additional skill can add a million dollars to your income. I know that's such a huge number, but trust me when I say this, like when you start learning about different things that like we call specialized knowledge, which I'm going to go through, it's going to make a world of difference in what you're trying to accomplish. Things that seem to be extremely difficult right now, such as adding a few hours in your job because you're already maxed out, increasing your hourly rate, making an additional $500, getting your spouse, uh, your partner a job and, and having some money saved up. These things can seem extremely difficult right now. Once you find uh, something that is worth a lot more than a few thousand dollars and a cumulative addition of that can add up to a million dollars in a relatively short amount of time. In the United States, it takes about six years to become a millionaire. But if you're following specific coaching guidance from the mentors and also learning skills related to money, that's like the most neglected area of our educational system. That's why my kids do not go to regular school, right? So I'm fortunate enough to have them private school because I don't want them to be exposed to what's happening right now. Because let's be honest, you might you know, like your life. You might not believe that money is everything. I certainly do not believe that money is everything. But I do know that it solves a lot of the problems that you have right now. And there are ways that you can change it for yourself, starting from today. So let's go through the agenda. What are we going to talk about there? We're going to talk about credit and lending, those two areas that require major, major awareness in information, knowledge, and over time experience. And as you spend more time, it's going to turn into mastery. Once you have mastery over two, those two areas, you're going to understand how the entire monetary system works and how you can use it to benefit yourself instead of becoming the customer of it, right? So there are millions of people in the United States who need credit cards, but applying for credit cards, using in consumer credit, and there are also millions of small businesses who are looking for funding. I want you to separate yourself from all of those people and put yourself on a spot where you don't become the person who needs it, like the masses, you become the person who provides it without using your own money. I think that's a very exciting concept. That's what I've been doing over the past, I think at this point, 15 years right now, I've been in a fortunate spot to do it, help other people uh, do the same thing. Whether you join you know, Business Lending Blueprint or not, my goal is not to pitch you for our services right now. We have a calendar full of people who are having conversations currently with our enrollment team to join BLB. So it's not for that. I just want you to walk away with tools. And if you stay until the end, I'm going to hand you off a document that you can use right away to start generating leads and closing deals. Even if you decide not to join BLB, or maybe you're not in a financial position to join BLB. So we're going to talk about how to become a business loan broker and also leverage business credit to build lasting wealth. That's super important. It is obviously important to solve your immediate money problems, which is making a few thousand here and there or consistently and also make money to replace your current income. If that's your goal, that's like tier two. But after all of that, when you're said and done, what are you going to be doing? Are you going to be, are you getting close to retirement? What's your plan? Like do you, since I don't think anyone can work forever. Uh, so how do you use different strategies to start building wealth? If you don't know who I am, my name is Oz Connor. I am the founder of Business Landing Blueprint and the Business Credit Success Blueprint. And over the years we had, we develop an amazing community of people and that allows us to claim a lot of awards and uh, both in entrepreneurial world, marketing world, um, a lot of press, as you can see from the pictures, like slowly, I, this starts from me being in my early 20s all the way to late 30s right now. So the reason I'm showing you all of this is not to brag about it. It's just when you're getting access to information, you want to make sure that you're getting it from uh, someone or, or a company who's been doing this for a while. You don't want someone who's just going to reiterate what they just read online or someone who just watch a couple of videos and they're trying to come back and teach you what they've done. That's not us, obviously. So this is from very recent. Actually, this year, we made it to Inc. 5000 list. This is our second year in a row. That means, um, you know, that's given to companies who are in the fastest growth path. You know, I top, top 5000 is selected every year. And then we're on that list two years in a row. Obviously, we couldn't have done it without our community and uh, what we're doing here today, right? So helping people understand credit and lending, because guess what? You're not going to get it from the banks. You're not going to get it from the government, you're not going to get it from the educational system. So someone needs to give it to you. And for since we give a lot of value over time, we got some of that value back and it allow us to, you know, have claim awards like this. And these are some of the things that awards that we give to our members in our community. This uh, used to be, this is in another house that I used to own. I moved to New Jersey right now. Uh, this is my living room. So we have these gongs that are being shipped out to our members who reach certain levels of success. These are pictures uh, of some of our members. I and mean, we have hundreds, hundreds of 
of testimonials. Even if you go to like trustpilot.com or any independent review site, you can see what people say about us. But I'm just trying to share some of the things that so I can get your attention, right? Because I need you to stay through this whole presentation for your benefit. That's extremely, extremely important. It's obvious at this point, if you're here, it's obvious that you know that what we offer is business lending blueprint. But today is not about that. If you want to join, you can join on your own. Today, I want to grab your attention enough that you kind of take part in this journey with me. And when you come out of it, you have tools and you have steps, you have a strategy, you have all the tactics that you need to go out there and start building your own business, which is my mission, right? So I want to make sure that we can get that done through our conversation today. So again, a couple of more of these pictures that our students are sharing in our community. Now, what brings you here usually is obviously you want to understand credit and lending, but many people go online and search like, how do I get rich and how to make money, uh, which is fair, right? So everyone, uh, most people at least want to increase their net worth, increase their current net income, the, their take home income. And it's an interesting universe out there. We recently started hiring for a few positions internally. And I need, I see that there are thousands of people who are looking for jobs. If you look at the employment report, we're having the lowest unemployment rate, I think for the past 35 or 40 years. But honestly, what I'm seeing on the field is not that. So matter many people either A, are not happy with their current job, they're looking for a change. B, they've been looking for a job for a few months now, they can't find it. So for that reason, people go to Google and Yahoo and Bing, and they're looking for ways to make additional income, which is fair. But the way people do that is not in the right framework. So these two gentlemen, I love them to death. They are my dream mentors. I've learned a lot from them. I, I think I learned most from them about money than anyone else in my life. I never met them in person, uh, but you can get a lot of information about them, what they've done through YouTube and the books they publish. So one is Warren Buffett, basically one of the richest guys for the longest amount of term, like he's been rich for such a long time, first generation person. The, one, the gentleman on the left is his right hand person. He recently passed away at age 99, like literally two months ago. Charles Munger, who's my hero, he taught me how to think in terms of mental models, because every day we make so many decisions from what to wear, what to eat. And if you own a business owner, you're expected to make a lot of decisions throughout the day. But if you don't have a mental framework on how to make those decisions, you're in major trouble because then you say things like, oh, my gut tells me I need to do this. Well, your gut doesn't have the cleanest stuff. Like you, we know what's in your gut, right? We know what's in everybody's gut. So I, I can't imagine Warren Buffett making gut decisions. So you need frameworks. Like how do you make certain decisions? So you have the highest odds of making the right decisions. So Charles Munger have these mental frameworks that he teaches and I learned one of them and it's applicable to what brings you guys here today, which is technically, I mean, we all want meaning in life. We all want to start the right business. But at the end of the day, we want to change our current financial situation. Is that right? I mean, that's like most people. So what he says is through his mental model, when you are about to make a change, you take the most common question that you ask, such as how do I make money? And you flip it upside down. You invert it. It's called an inversion model. So what he says is instead of looking for instead of tapping in, how do I make money? He basically says, what is stopping me from making money, right? So then, you know, if you're looking to add additional income right now, everyone wants to know, oh, what kind of business should I, sh should I start? What should I sell? Should I do Amazon? Should I invest in stock market? Should I get a financial advisor? Should I change my job? Should I just, you know, uh, update my resume? All those things. But those are just random questions and your mind is going to give you random answers. Simple as that. If you ask your mind why you're so fat, right? Your mind is going to tell you because you eat a lot. But if you ask your mind, how do you lose 10 pounds? Your mind is going to give you way better answers, right? Simple as that. I know I'm being a little direct, but I think we're all adults here. So we can talk about this because I don't like sugarcoating things, right? So if you're lacking, if you're having money problems in your life, usually you're not asking the right questions. So I love this inversion model and the inversion model, like I'm going to walk you through the next diagram here. It shows us what the problem is. So what is the problem with the banks? The better question to ask is how do we turn it into an opportunity for us? We can cry and whine and complain about how evil the banks are, how evil big pharma or the military industrial complex and all of that, or we take it and invert it into an opportunity. So this is what is happening in the United States right now, right? So this is the current model of monetary policy. So there are about 34 million small businesses in the United States. And some of them are startups, some of them are consulting companies, some of them are the deli and the bagel shop around the corner, restaurants, cleaning companies, IT companies, you name it, right? There are 34 million small businesses and there are banks on each corner, right? In every city, there are so many banks. 
they have branches, they have physical real estate. Why do you think that is designed that way? It's because they want the money, the deposits from the small business owners. Like when this business makes a thousand dollars, bank says, hey, if you've taken some of that through credit cards, what's going to end up here? Or if you made some cash, it's going to end up here. Then you have the employees. There are hundreds of millions of employees in the United States and they get paychecks, right? And their paycheck is direct deposit into the banks, right? It's convenience because you don't want to walk around uh, with a bunch of cash in your hand. It's for protection purposes and all that stuff. This is fine. The banks are needed, obviously. This is what's happening. So small businesses keep depositing money into the bank. So what happens to your money? Well, the bank takes that money and get, loans it out to some of that to consumers, meaning that you know you when you're applying for a credit card, you get a Capital One credit card, let's say. And then um, at, when you reach the billing date, if you don't pay it back, you get hit with 25, 30, 35% interest rate. But the funny thing is when a business you know deposits their money into the bank, do you think they're getting a portion of that? Because their money is being used by the bank. Well, they get less than 1% in interest. Okay. So it's a whole different problem. And also the bank gives money to uh, real estate investors, the moguls, people who buy commercial real estate or in the people who are buying their home for the first time, investors and whatnot. So the money that's deposited being used, but it's mostly going into large corporations, mid-sized businesses, large size businesses. All right. This is, seems like a one-way road. Here's where the model breaks. When this small business needs money, same bank that makes it available to consumers at like 25 to 50% interest rate. But anyone who wants to buy a home practically can buy it with five to 10%. Large corporations can show collateral and can, can, can claim tens of millions of dollars. But this small, poor business owner, which drives the entire US economy, most of US economy is driven through small business revenue, 70% of it actually, that's the majority, right? When they need money from the banks and when they need it, the amount they need is anywhere from 5,000 to 500,000. Now we're not talking about tens of millions of dollars or billions of dollars or trillions of dollars. Bank says, no, ah, this is where the model breaks. So now 86% of the small business applicants to get a loan are declined. And that number jumped all the way up to 92 to 95%, depending on the bank through the recent pandemic that hopefully we all survive, right? And it doesn't come back again. So this is the current model right now of what's happening to money and small businesses who arguably need the most amount of money in comparison to these groups are left stranded. If you follow Charles Munger model, what question do we ask? Okay, this is very painful, but how do we turn this into an opportunity? This is the model of alternative lending. This is what we're going to be talking about today. So same business, new and existing small business in the United States. By the way, 17,000 new businesses are being formed every single day. It makes sense for us to be our own bank pretty much and utilize the lender network. Now they know about business credit if they're educated on acting on the business credit and take advantage of business credit. And if they take advantage of alternative lending options, they get access to capital with no problem. Because if they learn about business credit, they already have the business. And this could be you. You might start your business. You already, you might already have, have business. You don't want to knock on the door of the banks when you need the money. Because guess what? Almost 90% of the time, the answer is no. But it's not going to be a plain no. They're going to make you come back and bring all these documents. They're going to make you wait minimum four weeks to six weeks to give you the no. By the time they give you the no, I mean, why you need the money, the reason for it gets worse and worse. Maybe you owed money to somebody else. Maybe you needed to buy some kind of tool or equipment. Now you're six weeks into it and you're hoping that you're going to get a yes and you get no. So small businesses get disappointed all the time. So when they learn about business credit, what happens? Well, they get access to higher credit limits. I'm going to talk to you about why that is the case. I'm not expecting you to know any of this. Okay. You might know. Kudos to you if you do. But today, as we're going through this, I'm going to walk you through what that even means. Well, they can get access to credit without having to sign it as a personal with their personal guarantee. What that means is whenever, whenever you're signing a, a loan document, you are pretty much saying that, yes, my business needs this tool. Let's say you're buying a truck, but if business fails to pay that back to the bank, you can come and get it from me personally. That's what personal guarantee is. So you might lose your home, you might lose your house and whatnot. So, but if you build your business credit, you no longer need to sign documents with a personal guarantee. Your business has the credit, which again, I'm going to break it up for you. So don't, don't worry if you're not uh, following me 100% clearly at this point. And the third one is leverage. So when you have access to more money, more resources, more credit, it gives you a lot more leverage. Think about, but let's say that you're, you're a shop on a shopping strip and your business income is dependent upon whatever you're selling. What if you have enough credit to buy the next door neighbor or the whole strip with the credit? Because you know the area really, really well. You know it's going to cash flow $50,000 a month. But if you use leverage and get credit, your payback monthly is $30,000. So you're 
automatically going to be in profit for $20,000 if you get the property. The problem is you don't have enough cash to buy a $5 million building. But if you have business credit, that becomes no problem. Things like that. And we can add a lot more examples to it. That's the business credit side, which we're going to talk about. The other thing is alternative lending, which is the industry that I'm in. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story in a few minutes. So we have access to so many different funding options. There are hundreds of alternative lending uh, funding options, but we've distilled them down to 12 different options, which gives you the shortest amount of transaction time, meaning that if someone needs the money, you can actually help them in two to three days and still get paid. For the most part, no collateral needed. What is a collateral? Well, if you're looking for money from somebody or from a bank or from another entity, they're going to tell you, hey, I'm going to give you the money, but what if you can't pay it back? I need something from you as a collateral. That could be your house or something. So you're taking a lot of risks in the case that you might not pay it back. In alternative lending, for the most lending options, there's no collateral needed. Now, what kills most deals in traditional lending is the person's credit score, personal credit score. Well, in terms of lending industry for 95% of deals, we don't really care about the credit score. It affects your payback rates and all that stuff. But then it just opens you up to millions of businesses who would use you because small businesses are not really liking their banks. I don't know if you caught the wave, but if you talk to any small business out there, they're not big fans of their ways. Yeah, because it, at this point, this should give you some level of butterflies in your stomach when you because entrepreneurs recognize opportunities when they see it, right? So there is this opportunity. That's why I started out with the Charles Munger example, because if you see this, like you can look at this older model, right? And get really pissed at the banks. But what is that doing for you? Really not much. Okay. You can hate on your bank. But if you look at this, you actually want them to stay like this and they will because they can't really change their model. They're huge. They're on the stock market, stock exchange and all of that. That's why this area has been been growing in triple digits, a few hundred percent every single year. That's that's why we're in the alternative lending industry. While most of the other business opportunities have been shrinking and their growth has been smaller and smaller, we're seeing the opposite in the alternative lending industry. And honestly, um, not many people actually know that this exists. So I just want to give you a big slide on why this is actually a good idea, because in your mind, you might be comparing this to other things like getting into a franchise or starting starting a brick and mortar business and, and whatnot. So I just wanted to show you the, the what, what this looks like. Low barrier to entry, pretty much. You don't have any franchise fee, no lease. And you don't really need a building because you, know, you can do this from home. No certification, no degrees, high unlimited earning potential, right? Your earning is not dependent on what is happening in the stock market, what's happening in the crypto market, what's happening in the real estate market. I don't know if we have any real estate people or mortgage people in the room today, but they're suffering, guys. Okay, so it was crazy. Christmas for like two years in a row, three years in a row over the past couple of years. But this year has been super, super tough. It's not going to be getting better. So they are suffering from the lack of housing out there, the houses being not available and also the high interest rate. So with us, this is a recession proof industry. It was born in a recession. So unlimited earning potential, exponential income opportunity. What that basically means is that you make income through different tiers. You make money up front when the deal is funded. There's a recurring revenue option. There's and also passive income, which we'll talk about. So a lot lifestyle and freedom. That's the reason that I chose this. I wanted to be location independent. My job required me to commute to New York from Pennsylvania. And that paid me really, really well. But you get tired of it. I was recently married. So I was, it was painful. And I didn't want to do that anymore. So this gives you location independent. And it doesn't, it's not super like low transactional, meaning that if you're selling like a $200 product, you will need to sell a lot of them to make money. With the average transaction, average commission is two to $4,000. The average income in the United States is about 50 thousand. That's like when you take out the taxes, that's like 4,000 a month. Average transaction commission here is two to 3,000. So with like two deals a month, like entire month, and you're helping two people get funding, you're usually making more than the average income in the United States. That might be your income or that you, you might be at a higher bracket or lower bracket. Since I don't know that, I'm going off of what the average is in the United States. Market demand. You never want to be in a dying industry, right? Like you don't, at this age, you don't want to be selling cassette players. Even if, I don't know if, it, if I'm aging myself, but some people might want that, but that's not a growing trend. You want to be in an industry that's in massive demand. And alternative lending has been growing to $3 trillion or more. When I first started out, the average deal was $20,000, $30,000, meaning that the, the average funding that goes to small businesses right now that has gone up, but the upper limit pretty much has no ceiling. I mean, we had people who funded $300 million in our lending network. That's insane. That was never heard of. That would be like an institutional funding. Not anymore.
more. You, you can fund super high ticket deals through the alternative lending industry. And you can create multiple streams of income. You can get paid up front. You get repeat payments from the customers because they need funding. The average US small business owner needs funding three times, up to three times a year. That means they're coming back to you to get the funding three times. And you have other residual income options. Just wanted to show you that. Okay, so let's talk about some of the funding options because you heard me say that, you know, there are more than about 12, about a dozen different funding options. So these are the funding options that we teach because, you know, after looking at so many different funding options, these are the ones that works for our community and for people who, who are starting in this industry because of so many reasons, so many good reasons, because some of the other lending options, they take uh, such a long time, but these are short time span, anywhere from like two days to if it is a real estate transaction, it could be 45 days at most. But as you know, like if you're in the banking, if you came from banking, a transaction could take months sometimes and still might not come through. So real estate funding options, real estate based funding, real estate funding, revenue based funding, non revenue based funding, startup funding, equipment funding, working capital and fast funding, credit repair, IRA and 401k based funding, business line of credit, SBA invoice factoring, asset based funding, credit card processing. Now, if you don't know what those mean, that's perfectly okay. That basically says that you are a capable of funding three categories, three buckets of businesses, startups, anyone who has a great idea, they want to start a business, but they need to initial push in the butt, like anywhere from 10,000 to $150,000, you can help them. You can help existing small businesses, whether they want to buy a, another truck for their fleet, they want to buy a car for delivery, they want to buy a fridge for their restaurant. And let's say they're a daycare, they need chairs and tables and, you know, cubbies and all that for the kids, you can do that. So that's an existing business funding. These are rapid funding options. The third bucket is the real estate. Anyone who is in the real estate industry, fixers and flippers, right? Even though the real estate industry slows down, fixed flip industry, a build from ground up doesn't really slow down because investors seek for opportunities. They seek opportunities and when they find it, they are looking for funding and our lender network can provide that. So the terminology might sound complicated, but all you need to know that you can help startups, small businesses and real estate investors. How you do that, obviously, if you do it is on your own. And that's why I'm giving you this list. So if you want to research each of these industries and find partners, you can certainly do that. I wanted to give you some of the prominent lending partners in our industry. We have our own lending lending network of partners that we connect our members with. But again, if you're not ready or if you don't want to join Business Lending Blueprint, at least you know who the big players are. So if you decide to do this on your own uh, or if you decide to get access to capital, you can go through these companies. They are very established companies in this industry that, that would give you access to capital. But if you work with Business Lending Blueprint, we give you access to our network of lending partners where you wouldn't really need to worry about learning the products or learning the partners. All you would need to focus on is finding people who need capital, which is 70% of the market, honestly, right? So small businesses always, like if you went on a main street, downtown main street and start talking to businesses, 70% of the small businesses would say yes, if you would offer them a funding option, because, well, guess what? They would, they would have used it for buying more inventory for the holiday season. And when the holiday season is over, they would use it to pay off debt if they have any, hire more staff and change their location, change their offer. There's a million and one reasons why a business would need funding. So based on my years of experience, because I get this question a lot, like what needs to happen for someone to succeed in this industry? Success to me, doesn't just mean that you fund your first deal. Success means that what needs to be in place working that you're generating 15 to 20 K per month. And honestly, it comes down to like four buckets being in, in place. One is you got to know how to find people who are ready to look for funding. Again, this is probably one of the easiest, if not the easiest industries to find people because you're selling the sexiest product on earth, which is money. Those are your leads, people who already are in existence and they're running their business and they want to start a business. The second thing is you have to get access to exclusive lending options, which I gave you a list of, and the lenders who can fulfill those lending options, the demands. And the third one is you want to know how to get your clients funded, meaning that either you're going to rely on the lending partners to do that for you, because if you're starting out on this own, in all honesty, the number one problem is, yeah, you can learn about the funding options, you can find the lenders, but are you going to be the one doing the paperwork and doing the back and forth communication 
conversation with the client. In this industry, it's not that complicated. It's not like mortgage. I don't know if he ever bought a house or attempted to even like sign a lease on, on a property. There's a lot of paperwork and mob. In our industry, it's usually like one to two page of application, two, three months of bank statements. But if you have the right lending partners, you can have them do all of that work. That's why I put this bucket as number three. It's super important that you can get your clients funded and they come back because they're happy with the process. So you, you, you want to have almost like an automated way of doing that. So the three ways, find people who are in need of capital, who are looking for capital to start a business and grow the business. The second thing is being to know about the lending options and know the lenders who can fund them, get the deals funded, and you need to have access to right coaching and guidance because here's what happens. Like you fund your first couple of deals. Yay, awesome job. Truly awesome. I'm serious, right? But then people don't know what to do next. Like, do I hire people? Do I move into an office? Do I keep doing the same thing? Or do I do this on the side? Do I stop marketing? That That's where you lose track of what is important, what needs to come next in business. That's why many people get stuck in that income bracket of 10 to 15K because that's comfortable for most people. You're making close to 200K a year. But then with what you have, you can easily push that to 40 to 50K per year. You just don't know how. But you got to work with people who's done it before. Otherwise, it can take you years to figure it out. Not because you're not mentally capable of doing it. It's because you just haven't done it before. And you can do trial and error. But one thing that we have very limited of is our time. Actually, we don't even know how much time we have left. So it's far easier to follow a model that's proven, whether you follow the blueprint model or maybe you have someone in your life that you look up to has built businesses and that they know what to do next. They can coach you or you can go work with them. But it is so important to model after another company or someone who's done it. Again, I'm not saying this so you can join us. We do train hundreds of people. I would love to see you there. But think of someone else in your life too who can help you. It could be your spouse, your partner, your friend, your father, uh, your neighbor, whoever that is. Usually it's not about lack of resources. It's a lack of being resourceful. So you might actually know people who's done it. So once you're at that level, like 15, 20K level, and you're like, this is awesome. I'm making a lot of money. I'm making more money than my job. And maybe you got rid of your job and this is your best performing business, maybe out of the other business ventures that you have. Usually where people kind of screw up is the next step, like doubling that amount because that requires a different tools, different strategy, different mindset. In alternative lending industry, where it kind of scares people usually, they think that this jump will require hiring people, getting an office. No, not really. We have many people in our community who are anywhere from 30 to 50K per month with zero employees. This can be done, but this is why you need the coaching and the guidance. It's super, super important. That was one, I guess, secret in life that allowed me to create multiple eight-figure companies is to model after people who've done it before. I currently spend over $100,000 per year on my own education, paying to have access to certain people who have businesses that are 10 times bigger than mine. Like the people that I talk to, they have businesses in hundreds of millions of dollars per year. Why? Because I can I figure it out on my own. Yeah, but how long will it take? What would be the cost for me to figure it out? Versus me talking to somebody who's done it before. And for them, the problems that I'm dealing with is peanuts. Like they've, they've dealt with it before. They have, you know, managers and CEOs who've dealt with it before. So where you, wherever you are right now, let's say you're making 5K a month right now, you want to double that. If you've never doubled that, it's going to be extremely difficult for you to do it on your own. I'll be perfectly honest with you. Like doubling anything is very difficult. That's like more than 100% growth. So if you're going from 5,000, 10, 12, 15,000 in income, and time is of the essence. You can spread it out to like five years or you can get there literally in a few months. So that's why if you have not adapted into this thinking, and I used to be on that boat as like an A-type personality, I thought I got it all and I could do it myself. Then you fall flat on your face. Then you notice that you don't know everything. And then what you don't know is going to cost you. It's better to find people who know what you're talking about and I get mentorship from them. And from that point on, it catapulted both my personal and business life for sure. So when people join BLB, so we talked about a lot of the funding options and what needs to happen and four things to have in place, we mail people this huge poster that shows them, we call it the BLB flowchart. What questions to ask? Uh, how to answer it properly? How to direct people to the certain lending options? So even if you know nothing about alternative lending, you will put this in front of you and when you're having a conversation with someone and basically answer these questions. And when you get to the bottom of this, you know exactly where that lead goes and you pass it off to the lending partners. And we also have direct lenders. If you want to do this yourself, you can 100% do that. We support both options. If you want to get the done for you option where the lenders and lending partners do that, or you do it yourself, you still follow the same model. So this is from our community, actually. So we ship it out to people again when they join. This is the size of it. People framed it up, put it on their wall. They get super happy about it. Some people print out the PDF version because the moment you join, you don't have to wait for the uh, delivery of it. You can immediately print it out. See, this becomes a major event for people for
for sure. So let's talk about how I got started in the lending industry. This is from like 12 years ago. This is our first home that we bought for $132,000 in Eastern Pennsylvania. This is when I'm actually commuting from Pennsylvania to New York City to fulfill my duties as an employee at a company that sells like POS services, those touchscreen services that you see at the bars and restaurants. I also sold uh, payroll and I also sold credit card services that when, you know, when you go order a drink, when the bartender swipes that card, those transactions go through the company that I used to work for. So then I'm in New York City, cold calling, hustling, trying to make money. And I started out at 100% commission. Then as I climb up to the corporate ladder, I started having a base salary plus commission. I was like, Christmas, that's amazing. So that means that you wake up and you know that you're not going to go hungry. At least there's like a base salary to cover the expenses. So I climb up the corporate ladder in a few years. And at this point, my annual income is about two, 250K. Not too shabby. It's pretty good. But then I meet a guy who is in the alternative lending industry and we're having a conversation. This guy is very smart. He knows that I have a network of restaurants that I work with. He's like, hey, dude, what if you introduce me to some of your restaurant owners? Then I tell them about a funding opportunity. And if they want to get access to money, like no pressure, I'll give you a commission. Is that fair? I'm like, okay, I don't really understand how that works, but why would they not go to a bank? And he explains for the first time, this is what I'm hearing. Like what I just showed you guys is happening over 10 years ago. It's like, yeah, they can't like go talk to them. Yeah, I don't really believe him. So I call a couple of restaurant owners and ask them, hey, like I have somebody who says that they, he specialized in funding restaurants and you can get your funding in two, three days. I want to make an introduction if you're interested, but like, are you in the market looking for funding? And uh, a few of them are like, yeah, but we, we went through the bank and we got declined. So can he approve us? So I went back to that guy and said, hey, this is what I'm hearing, man. Like, you're right. A lot of them went to the bank and they got declined. So how would that even work? He's like, don't worry about it. If you can make the introduction, I'll take care of the rest and you'll get paid and your customers will be happy. I said, fine. I passed him like I, I four leads, like four of the restaurant owners who said yes to talk to him. I forgot about it. Went on to my days working, cold calling, pulling on doors, telemarketing and all of that, working with the restaurants to implement the POS systems. Then two weeks later, I get the call from the same guy. He offers to buy me coffee at a Starbucks. We go sit down and he gives me envelope that has that check in it. I open up, it's $4,000. Check has my name on it. It says $4,000. You get baffled, right? It doesn't even make sense anymore because you know I had a salary, I had commissions, but my average commission on a deal was like a few hundred dollars at most, but it could be as little as a few 50, 60 cents, depending on the transaction volume and all that stuff. Seeing a $4,000 check, I mean, I couldn't even believe my eyes, you know, and I asked him, hey, how, how does the math work? He basically said that one of the restaurants took him up on $40,000 in funding. I'm like, okay, so we made 10% on a 40,000? He's like, yeah, 4,000. So I'm having this Wolf of Wall Street moment in my mind. I'm like, what? Is this even real? And then we start our relationship further and further and I keep passing leads over to him. And then that's that's the first epiphany moment in my mind. I'm like, okay, I know something that most people do not really know. And at that point back then, there's only one funding option, which is a merchant cash advance in this case. So I start working with him. I don't work for him. He's like a referral partner. I'm trying to figure out if this thing is real or not, like what's really happening. I go talk to my merchants who got the funding and they got a new fridge and it works for them and whatnot. I'm like, wow, I'm capitalizing on this now. And I give my resignation to my boss who is shocked because he didn't expect me to quit when I was making that much money. But in my mind, I'm like, not only I found a way to make a lot more money, but I found a way, an industry that is at its infancy stage. No one knows about it. Everyone is super skeptical about it. There's only one lending option and people were already preferring that option versus going through the bank and getting declined. And these are high transaction businesses. You're in New York City. If something breaks, you cannot wait four weeks to freaking fix it. Like you need to buy something. If you cannot make the payroll on Saturday, you start losing your key staff. So you need to get the money, make the payroll and pay people. Once you're done, you can pay it off and get rid of the interest and all that stuff. So I was, I got super curious about it. That was the start of my journey in the alternative lending industry. As I learned more and more about it, I combined it with marketing strategies because I, I don't know about you guys, but I never liked the idea of cold calling and telemarketing. Like who likes calling, dialing 500 people a day? That's what we used to do because there was no other way. No one knew about online marketing and I hated that experience and I don't use the, that word a lot. So I didn't like it at all. So I wanted to learn about online marketing. And as I learned about it, I brought it to the existing businesses in the alternative lending industry. Honestly, not many of them were interested. They just wanted to be stuck in their old ways of Wolf of Wall Street, calling, dialing, dialing, smile and dial. That really didn't sit well with me, like pushing people to buy a lending option they're not really interested in. Like, yeah, you're selling money, but I'm like, wait, there must be enough demand out there. Why are these people just forcing people to take money? And I started my own company to help them learn online marketing. Then that brought us to pretty much today over time that I said, 
I don't want to just offer it to alternative lending companies. The business is growing so big. I want to make the everyday people who are ambitious aware of this opportunity. And it has evolved over time. We have so many lending options. We have lending options at 0% interest, 5% interest, 10% interest, all the way up to 50, 60% interest. But you have a lot more flexibility right now that I did not have. But I saw the opportunity. I was always entrepreneurial. I'm like, there is something here much bigger than my freaking $4,000 check. Does that make sense? So let's go through the fundamentals of this business. Basically, you find people who are interested in funding, then you want to make sure that they get information that they need from you, right? So that could be your lending partner. And that makes your pipeline. If you're in sales, pipeline basically means that how many opportunities do you have at a given time? Do you have 10 people who are interested in funding, 20 people, 30 people, five people, four people, whatever your goal is. And at the end, they turn into a customer. That's how you make money in most businesses. This is the same way in this business. The major difference is that you're selling money. You're not selling a product that will turn it into money. For example, you know, if you're starting an Amazon business, you have to find the right product, sell it. Hopefully the competition doesn't catch up to you within the next 24 hours. You sell it, then there's a profit margin. You make the profit. In our industry, you're pretty much telling people, hey, do you want more money? No? Fine. Next person. Because if they don't want more money, what are you going to do? Like you can't push people to take money from you. But most people do not even know their options, right? That's very important. These are the fundamentals. Like when you can automate it and grow this, like within BLB, we have all the automation tools, the CRM and the entire website. We, we provide you all of that. If you're doing this on your own, you need to have that, right? That you build, build a pipeline, turn it into a customer. Then what changes this industry drastically is that you start using leverage. Let's say you funded two deals and you made $10,000. Well, over time, you can use leverage. For those of you that might not really know what leverage is, is an investment strategy of using borrowed money, the use of various financial instruments or borrowed capital to increase the potential return of an investment. What that basically means is you're using other people's money. When you're funding a business, obviously you're not pulling money out of your own bank account and funding that bagel shop so they can buy a machine. But as you generate more income, what if you could? That's where you get into partial syndication, passive syndication, and becoming a lender. Now, we're going to move from making more money than you're making now to making a lot of money and all the way to making passive income, pretty much making your money work for you. No one talks about this in the alternative industry. It's like a well-kept secret. People talk about becoming a business loan broker, but I'm just going to unveil the whole thing for you. So how do you use the leverage? When you become a business loan broker, it's an extremely lucrative industry. You're going to start making money if you follow a system. But when you start making more money than what you need, people usually want to invest in that something. So they look for real estate options. They want to invest into other businesses. But what if you invest in something that you already know? Like if you're in the alternative lending industry, you know, small businesses need money. Small businesses always needed money. Small businesses will always need money, no matter what happens. So we're going to talk about the partial syndication, passive syndication, becoming a lender. This is a little bit advanced stuff. Up. Possibly you're not ready for any one of these right now, but I wouldn't want you to start a business unless you can imagine and see the mental image of the full spectrum, the full picture of you choosing this vehicle to generate more income, but being able to take it to a point of a total passive income and also wealth generation tool because passive income could mean that you're generating a thousand dollars in passive income per month. Awesome. You're generating passive income, but it doesn't save you from working, right? It's not going to be enough for you to stop working, but wealth generation is different. So you have your money being invested into the small businesses in the United States. So we're going to talk about that. What partial syndication is when you are a business loan broker, you have your people who are needing the funding and they get funded. In normal circumstances, you don't put any of your money. The lender takes care of 100% of it and you get paid a certain percentage commission. That's how I made my 4,000. If you go back that story, if you become a partial syndication, you're basically telling the lender, hey, lender, I want you to fund 75% of this deal, but the remaining 25 will be funded by me. Aha. Uh -huh. This is where things start getting interesting. For the sake of example, let's take $10,000. You found a business that needs $10,000 and you help that business get $10,000. So you're basically telling the lender, hey, lender, I need you to cover 7,500 of that, which is 75%, but I'm going to pay 2,500 of that out of pocket. And you might say, well, why would I do that? That's silly. 
kiosk. It's really not because on that, you're becoming your own bank. You're making up to four times more money on that 25% than you make your little $4,000, right? So you are becoming a partial bank in alternative lending industry. The lender assumes most of the risk either way, right? You're not losing your entire $10,000. That's one question I get from people. How do I become my own lender? The answer is you can't. You shouldn't think about becoming your own lender until you understand the game of alternative lending industry, right? This is you kind of dipping your toes into it and you fund 25% of it, or it could be more, it could be less. I'm just using this as an example, right? And on that portion, you make a lot more money. And now your 4,000 became like $6,000 on one transaction. Okay, well, that's interesting. You do that twice a month. Now you have a lot more access money that you actually need that could be invested. Either you can go buy real estate and lock up that money for the next five years, 10 years. Who knows? It's not a bad investment. It's just, it's not lucrative in the short term. Long term, if you sell it or lease it, you might make money. And the payback on these are three to six months. So your money's back to you in a relatively short amount of time. So that's partial syndication, right? Full syndication, I think you can see the writing on the wall as to where I'm going with this, is that as you your understanding grows, then you become a passive syndicator, meaning that other people, other business loan brokers, we do this in our community, bring leads to the lenders. Lenders fund the deal. Who do the lenders get the money from? Because they're not really banks, right? So they're individuals with money and you become one of those individuals and you fund deals. So for example, while I run a bunch of pods right now where I invest my own money into the syndication. So over the past two years, I funded probably over 2000 small businesses in the United States and my money keeps making babies. So they, <laughs> my money works for me. I don't even know the names of the businesses. I can find it if I want to, but our accountant does it. So when the businesses need money, others bring in the leads, we fund the businesses. Obviously it's not just me. There are so many others. We have students who are doing this. Then this is where you get into passive syndication. This is, I know there are a lot of videos on YouTube talking about like passive investment, but nothing is like 100% passive. This is the closest to being 100% passive. And I've been in real estate. I've been, other, I've been an Amazon seller. I've done most sort of things that there are like kind of trendy out there, right? So this is like 99.9% .9 passive. I just spent probably like an hour a month and looking at my portfolio. And then you're pretty much trusting the small businesses, which is what SMP 500 and all the, you know, uh, Standard & Poor, like any anything you're, anytime you're buying index funds or anything like that in stock market, you're counting on the performance of small business in the United States. So this is pretty much doing the same thing, but you are actually becoming your own bank and funding that's called passive syndication. This requires a lot more money. On average, you need to have like 50,000 or more. But again, I'm showing you ways to get there first and use the leverage. Like as far as I know, no business has this leverage. You can start making you know, $500 or $1,000 a month. That becomes your side income. You can increase that to 10, 15K per month and 20K per month to a point that you have access income. Then you start doing partial syndication with minimal risk, like do one of these a month if you want to. Then you can go you know, full on board and do passive syndication. This is a wealth generation strategy. The last one is becoming a lender. We have members who decide decided to have their own office and their own sales reps, their own underwriting people, which is okay. Like I, I used to have a much bigger company with employees and whatnot. So if that's your thing, you can do that. That's when you actually get to know the lenders and you do the underwriting, you start funding the deals. That's also a very, very lucrative way of making a lot of money. I think we are the biggest company that created the most number of uh, lenders within our network. So they started out as a business loan broker, similar to how we are looking at this business and and uh, this is usually a two to three year time frame. I just want to be super transparent with you. Don't expect to become a lender like six months from now, unless you have a lot of prior experience. But if you want to, the road is paved for you. It's there. So that's a discussion on the size of the opportunity. So the second leg of this is understanding business credit. Now we talked about funding, how it works, the size of it, why it's an amazing opportunity. But I want to leave you today with, with a deeper understanding of how business credit works, because not only you would need to build it for yourself, but you can monetize it and make a lot of money if you know about business credit. Let's go through that. Understanding business credit. This is like the best kept secret. There are a lot of videos on what credit cards still apply today with 0% interest or what to do to build business credit. But no one really kind of breaks down how it works and how you can turn it into a money-making opportunity for you because a lot of what hurts people is what they don't know, right? So they go sign up a contract with a bank on a credit card, but they shouldn't have if they, if they knew about business 
business credit. And hopefully by the end of this training, you're going to be a lot more informed about this. And I'm going to give you, provide you some information on how to do that, how to take care of this, how to turn this into an opportunity. So what is business credit? Business credit is credit established under a business name. As a person, you have your own FICO score, right? Your own credit. But when you build business credit, the business builds its own credit score and its own credit profile independent of you. So with an established business credit profile and business score, your business will then qualify for funding and credit under the business name. And it's not under you as the owner. So if you do like a quick comparison between business credit and personal credit, when it comes to the personal credit, we know that there are like credit bureaus like TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. Business credit works differently. It's subject to different numbers and figures and credit agencies. So in your personal credit, you want a 700 plus credit score to be able to buy things at an affordable interest rate, right? So if you have a 750 credit, that's considered awesome. So when you're negotiating for a house, for a car, the lowest tier of the interest rates possible because you are considered a lowest risk individual to the credit agencies. So business credit has something similar to it, but it is measured in a different manner, right? So business credit reports to three different agencies, Experian Business, Equifax, Dun & Bradstreet. Dun & Bradstreet is super important. It's going to come handy for us to know that name because that's where you get your Dun's number when you start your business. So when it comes to business credit, they are looking at things that are entirely different than they are with personal credit. For that reason, you get qualified for credit that's much larger than personal credit. For example, as a person, if Harvey goes and applies for a credit card, he might get approved for $25,000, $50,000. If his credit is doing really, really well, it can get approved for up to $100,000. Is that a lot of money? Sure, it's a lot of money, but that's kind of where, it, where the ceiling is. But if you have amazing business credit, the amount of funding you can get access to is in millions. I mean, I have Amex cards, pretty much the top tier Amex cards with no limits. And if I go check, when I go check online on Amex, what my spending limit is, it says unlimited because I have built the business credit. That's why I'm sharing this information. I've done it for my businesses. So I, you can have unlimited amount of funding available to you because the credit system for the business looks at different metrics than you as a person, because you as a person, probably your income is coming from your job, or if you're an independent contractor, you're 1099, you're contracted, or maybe you're a small business, but most small businesses do not even know of business credit. When you build it, now you have, you know, this option of getting $100,000 under your FICO score, but your business has a lot more options. So I think we, we touched on leverage. I think that's a great way of using leverage to grow your business. And the other thing is your business credit grows, you know, whether you use a personal guarantee or not. Like a lot of reasons why people who fail at businesses, they lose everything. They have to sign stuff with a personal guarantee saying that if I don't pay back, you can take everything from me. When you build business credit, again, that's considered as an entity in its own. And as you have a strong business credit profile, you don't need to sign things because what the promise of that business counts good as money. So they don't need you anymore. So even if that something happens to that business, you're still not devastated. You didn't you lose everything that you built up to that age. It's all under the business. So let's talk about the good debt and bad debt. When I give information about business credit, people say, yeah, but that means I'm gonna owe money, right? So I'm gonna be building debt. Sure, if you have been brought up through the traditional thinking, you think that having debt is pretty, pretty bad, right? Or if you've been following you know, Dave Ramsey, cut, cut up your credit cards, do not spend money and things like that, you think having debt is bad. But business owners use debt all the time for their own benefit because they know how to use it. If you just have a credit card arrive at your home and you're going on a shopping spree to buy liabilities, obviously it's bad for you. But if you're using it for business related decisions and expenses, it can be really, really good. So why do most people have a sour relationship with debt, right? So it, it comes down to like who is using the credit and what they're using it for. Most people use debt as you use it as a credit and you purchase liabilities. The things do not end up making money for you. Things do not help you gain a new skill, things that do not allow you to hire the right people or buy the things that will be considered an investment. So most things people buy are liabilities and they come with high percent interest payments because if you're buying liabilities, they're not going to allow you to make more money with them. Then you're going to have to pay back your debt. And when you're paying it back, like we discussed in one of the earlier slides, consumer credit cards, the interest rates are super high on those. Then you create financial chaos and which is really, really bad. That's why Dave Ramsey says that you don't use credit, don't spend money, don't buy stuff 
Starbucks and whatnot to save money, which I totally disagree with if you're an entrepreneurial person. If you're a consumer and you want to stay that way, follow that advice. But if you want to own your own business and grow it, stay away from people like Dave Ramsey or Susie Orman, because you know, it's going to be, you're going to get conflicting information on what needs to be done. So how entrepreneurs use debt as a leverage, they don't spend money, they invest money. They use credit as a leverage to buy things. Either they buy other businesses or, you know, or they invest into business programs. They buy assets that's going to generate more income. It's going to give them the credibility, the skill set they need, and it generates income. Yes, they started out with using credit. Maybe they don't have it. They have debt, but it's not bad debt because you might put something on a credit card, you know, let's say it's $10,000, but it is going to generate $100,000 for you. You just 10x the money that you didn't have. You owe it and you pay it back, but it is used as a leverage. So it's super important. Okay? So these are the people who use leverage, debt as a leverage versus other people that I talk to. So if you can resonate with any one of them, honestly, I'm not a huge fan of Robert Kiyosaki anymore, but Grant Cardone, but my hero, as I told you, is uh, these two gentlemen here. So they're, they're like super important. Warren Buffett, Charles Munger, he recently passed away, but these are the people who use money as a, as a leverage to grow their wealth. That's why I'm hammering in the fact about building business credit. It's super, super important. So all right, let's talk about the five ways to use credit to build wealth. You can use the pay off bad debt, invest in yourself, buy real estate, start a business, start lending. That's an option too, and start and grow your existing business. So when you do join Business Lending Blueprint, here's what we give away. I know there are companies who sell something like this for like $5,000. We're giving you an entire blueprint on building business credit for free. When you become a full-time member of Business Lending Blueprint, here's what you get access to. You get access to the entire training on how to build your own business credit from scratch. We're assuming that you don't know much about this. You might have an existing business or side business. Maybe your family has some business you want to help them. But even if you're starting your own lending business, you want to understand understand it, strategies to get approved for high limit credit cards, monitor your business credit score, how to apply with three bureaus, access to 10 different lending options, become corporate compliant, uh, join our community, but also some bonus modules that are not relevant to alternative lending they wanted to include. For example, how do you transfer your personal vehicle? I think most of you have cars here, right? How do you put it under business credit? So every payment that you make for your car, if it is a lease, if you're financed it, counts towards building business credit. It's not about buying random things to build business credit. It's about how to use it for the things that you already do. So how to leverage business credit to cover personal expenses. That's super important too, because you're buying disposable things every single month and you can put it under your business credit. How to buy real estate with 0% down using business credit. These are like super technical information that you can immediately start using with what you have going on right now and how to buy up to like four cars and create a cash cow business through business credit. Those are the things that I've learned over time and I noticed that people, I mean, have been selling these strategies each one of them for a few thousand dollars. I said I included as as bonus. So again, if you decide to join BLB, make sure that you claim this bonus to mention our mention to our team that you were on this call and I talked about this, and you'll get full access to that. Okay, I just want to cover that. All right. So now you understand the importance of credit, and you understand the importance of building business credit. You understand that you can make money with business credit because you can like the free information that you get in when you join Business Lending Blueprint. You can offer it to other people, and you can generate revenue that way. We haven't even talked about it. So if you give other people access to your business credit training, you can sell it. And there's a lot of information there. You can monetize that and um, pretty much you generate income through that. Now, when you become a business loan broker, you need to figure out how to generate leads, right? This is where I hand you off some tools that you'll be using after the call. Because, you know, I told you there are four things that's going to help you generate leads and close deals. The question is, well, how do we do this? So I'm going to walk you through how to do that right now so there is no stone unturned. Many people, when they are thinking about starting their own business or joining on a new opportunity, they say, yeah, Hey, Oz, this is great, man. I really like this. This sounds like an amazing opportunity. The thing is, I don't have time, man. I got a family. I got kids. I have a job. I have two jobs. Um, or sometimes we have ladies who say, um, I'm a single mom with three kids. I got to work. I got to put food on the table. And I have high expenses. I have really health problems and I'm close to retirement. So I don't have the time. That's not very understandable, right? We all have limited time. But also we know that we can make the time for things 
that are worthy of spending time. So that's why I put together a document for you guys. It's like a Google Sheet pretty much for you to make time for this because what we don't know, our memory is kind of flawed. It doesn't track everything that we wanted to track. So when you look back the last week, the week before the entire month, if I ask you what you've been doing, you can probably tell me, ah, oh, it's been busy. It's just a lot going on. So I'm gonna just get off of my presentation here and open up this document. So this is something that I've been using internally and I've used it on myself. We call it the 80-20 power grid or 100 units of time. So we value our time by the dollar, right? It's important because you have 24 hours and some people make $10 an hour with that time. Others make thousands of dollars an hour, the executives and whatnot. So I created a spectrum here from like negative $100 per hour activities and all the way up to $1,000 per hour activities. So when you receive this, you don't have to share this with anyone. Uh, what you want to do with this document is you're not going to be able to modify what's here. You want to go to file, make a copy for yourself. You want to make a copy. That's going to be your copy. That means no one else can see it. You don't want to post stuff here. If you try to edit this, you're not going to be able to edit it. But if you were, other people will be able to see it. That's why when you receive this, the first thing you want to do is make a copy. So I gave some examples. Minus $100 per hour activities is drinking, right? Doing drugs, having a negative circle of influence like people who are around you or sitting on decisions because they are bad, like they're costing you money and they're costing you time. Either like, you know, being on a fence is not comfortable. Get off the fence. Either make a decision yes or no. These are really negative influence decisions. And if you've been accumulating these for a while, obviously I don't need to explain to you why they're bad. Minus $10 per hour activities that's costing you uh, money is just, you know, it's an example watching Netflix. Like you're just spending a lot of time on TV. That time could be used to improve your situation. Activities that doesn't cost you anything, but it doesn't make you money is it just creates bad habits. Then you fall back into like activities that cost you money. It's death scrolling on social media, getting glued on social media, watching meaningless videos about other people's lives and whatnot. Then you have activities, $10 per hour activities activity like running errands, buying groceries that needs to be done unless you have your own chef or you know butler or anything like that. Most people don't have that. $50 per hour activity is learning a new skill. $100 per hour activity is following a mentor. $1,000 per hour activity is hiring a skill. And you know, these are examples. It's going to be different for each person. But at the end of this, you're going to know like when you fill out these columns, you're going to know what you're spending your time on. And on the same sheet, what does your time get spent each week? Activity and the number of hours. So if you've been watching Netflix, how many hours per week? Is it five hours? Okay. Social media, how many hours? Three hours, this and that. This represents four weeks here, pretty much. At the end of the week, if it totals up like 10 hours a week, well, you wasted 10 hours that could have been spent on building the business, right? If you're telling yourself that you don't have time, well, your time is there. It's just a matter of deciding, is it more important for you to do the things, the, the activities that cost that 10 hours or spend on building a business? Because you don't have to use that time forever. When someone joins business landing blueprint we tell them hey do not join if you cannot give us like an hour a day we give you all the tools that you need but if you tell me that oz with what i have going on i cannot put in an hour a day on average so he might choose saturday to do all of that or spend two days putting in five hours each and whatnot but if you're not able to come up with an hour a day to build a business that could give you the freedom then i honestly do not want that person within our community because they are not going to be successful this is a business. This is not a get rich quick scheme. You're not going to just join and money is going to start pouring in. You have to do the work. But unlike other businesses, you don't need five hours a day, 10 hours a day, 20 hours a day. You need as, as little as an hour, right? So if you can commit to that, and this shows you how to do that. Like I mentioned in the beginning, I don't like sugarcoating stuff. Like when someone tells me they don't have time, I want to believe them. But if someone goes through this example and shows me that, hey, like they're all working on like $50 per hour activities and they have no time, I believe them, but I've done this on myself and on our staff and our members. I know that if someone does this, they're going to come up with a lot of hours and they'll be super surprised. It's not your fault because most people don't even track where the time goes. Obviously, you're going to take out time that goes into like work. If you're commuting to work and then after your commute, you're staying there for 10 hours and coming back. Well, yeah, you're going to take that into consideration. You can't cut work unless you can. But for the most part, we don't want you to self-sabotage what's bringing your income. But this is just a tool for you to see for yourself. Again, that's why I don't need to see this, but this is for 
for your own two eyes to see that, holy cow, I actually am able to make time for this because what you track grows. When you start tracking it, you, you become more successful. And the second problem is, well, how do I get leads? Eyes? I don't know how to get leads. I never done this business before. I don't know how to use Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, or any of that. And you're talking about online marketing. I don't know how to do that. All right, let's solve that problem. I'm up for the challenge. I've done it thousands of times with our members before, and we'll do it here today. And I'm going to give you another tool for that. So five cash now things. Let's assume that you become a business loan broker and business credit expert. Five things that you can do immediately is I guarantee you it's going to generate you income in the next couple of weeks is, well, who doesn't know what you do? So you make a list, what we call dream 100. And I give you that list here as well. If you go to the second tab here. So the second one is dream 100. So when you're starting this business, even if you might not know anything about this is something that I tell my existing members in our community too. You do know people, right? Even if you're in your in, you know, 20 years old, 30 years old, 50 years old, 60 years old, you didn't go through life without knowing anyone. Like none of us lived in a cave for the past 30, 40 years. You do know people. But when I ask people like, how many people do you know? People shy away from the question and they say, not many people. I just know like a few people. That's why I built this dream 100 list to prove to you that you actually know a lot more people than you think you do. So this is how it goes. Like you build a list of the people who would die to know that you have access to capital. There are like four categories. One, who wants to start a business? Like who in your circle or in your spouse's circle, in your friend's circle, in your parents' circle, in your brother's and sister's circle? It doesn't have to be you. You can borrow people from other circles. Who wants to start a business? So you can call up your brother and be like, hey, do you know anyone who wants to start a business? Okay, just write down their names. Who has a small business currently? It can be a restaurant. It can be a tool shop. It can be a service-based business, a plumber, electrician, or something, a construction person, a roofer, landscape artist, landscaping company, manufacturing facility, and whatnot. Who has a small business? And these, these are the places that you might be shopping from. They can be like a shop that you go, a flower shop down the street that you've been using for the past 10 years. Who owns a real estate? Do you know any real estate investors? Do you know any property manager managers? Because they know real estate investors. Do you know real estate agents? Because they work with real estate investors. Do you know a mortgage broker? They work with real estate investors. And who's using or buying equipment? Do you know any trucking companies, any car companies, anyone who buys equipment, like construction companies, they use equipment all the time. Who do you know who are who have a tendency to buy equipment to fulfill their duties and their job and their business? Because we have equipment leasing options where you can help someone buy an equipment, but they wouldn't otherwise be able to buy. Like our community in Business Lending Blueprint helps so many trucking companies buy trucks because it's very difficult to buy your second, third, fourth truck through traditional funding options. First one, they're okay with. Second and third, fourth one, that you're a liability to the banks and, and different lenders. In our community, we help people do that all the time. So this Dream 100 list, it, and obviously 100 is a hypothetical number. It doesn't have to be 100, but it, it, you can certainly get to it. Like if you can get you know, 25 in each category, it's certainly 100. It's an easy way for you to not even know anything about technology or lending and still get to that number. And now you have access to that. I've given you access to that, that you can start playing around with that. So you build your Dream 100 list. Well, all right, Oz, I made the list. What do I tell them? Well, I got that covered too. So if it is a friend, obviously you want to turn this into a casual conversation, but this is how it goes. You don't want to pretend that you know everything. We just want to be totally honest because, hey, why not make money in, in a super honest way? Hey, John, hope all is well. I just want to let you know that I started a new venture. I am now connected with lenders who can provide startup and small business capital. If you know anyone who might need funding, I'd be happy to share my connections. Let me know, please. No harm done, nothing intimidating. You're just letting me know that you started a business, you're not telling them, oh yeah, I lend money now, or I'm a business loan broker, because you, you don't want the other person to be like, wait, you were doing something else yesterday. No, this brings their defense down. And this is a friend and people want to help you. You're just letting them know you start a new venture. You're not claiming you're a lender. You've been in the lending industry for X amount of years. Then you're saying, basically, I'm connected with lenders. I know lenders through my business partners who can provide startup and small business capital. If you know anyone who needs funding, I'll be happy to share my connections and the person Person, the very person that you talk to might be the person who needs it. So that you can take a screenshot of this and start using it immediately. I highly suggest that you do because this works. This has been tested before. If you have any old leads from other businesses, you call them and you say, hey, I know you and I connected last month about getting your business some capital. Like this is month two, let's say. You talked to a bunch of people. Have you secured the capital that you needed? Again, nothing intimidating. You're just asking them questions. If you have any other old customers, whether if you're in the lending industry or any other industry, it doesn't really matter because businesses usually need money three to four 
four times, even if they bought different services from you, they still need the capital from you. Now, the other thing is, even if you're not familiar with social media, here's a simple task that you can do, like super simple. Create a Facebook account if you don't have one or a LinkedIn account, Instagram, obviously use technology a little bit. So on Facebook, you can pretty much pick a channel and um, find 50 people who might need your services. How do you find 50 people? Well, there are like hundreds of different Facebook groups out there, small business funding groups, small business lending groups, people are looking for capital, small business groups like daycare owners and, you know, pharmacy, uh, pharmacies, landscape artists. They, they, they all have different groups. When you join them, they're all businesses. You send them a message, simple message. Hey, I just saw your post at uh, the X group, whatever Facebook group is. Thought we might be able to solve your financing problems. I help businesses get funding starting from 0% interest. Would you be interested in checking it out? Simple message, right? It works. It works all the time. So when you do that, any channel that you pick, it takes probably 20 minutes of effort per day to do this. Sending out the copy and paste, copy and paste to 50 people. I guarantee you some people will come back to ask you to tell more. And that's when you connect it with the lending partners. Either if you're in BLB, we give you a lot more than this so you can automate this whole process. But if you're doing this on your own, no excuses why someone wouldn't be able to spend like 20, let's say 30 minutes doing this, the remaining 30 minutes of qualifying people and passing it off to the lending partners. That's one hour a day. You generated five, 10 opportunities for you. Do that for five days a week. That's 50, 60 opportunities. So you're going to start funding one to two deals per week just from one hour activity. So two deals means like what, you know, five, six thousand dollars. So that can that, that that can easily get you like 20, 25. I know I'm making it sound super easy, but if you follow these five cash now things, it is very doable. People usually have a problem with consistency. They do something once and they go, oh, it's just, that didn't work. I'm not, I'm not going to do it again. But what if you kept doing it? Because it's simple 50 outreach messages, right? So it's going to get you going. And once you get the taste of making money through this industry, it's going to be very addictive because you're solving a major, major problem for other people. And you're educating people on the options that they have. People do not know. Like how many of you actually knew the odd lending options that I covered here today? And you're more advanced than more people because you are aware of this industry. Obviously, you're here. So you commit to any of these things and um, and you start doing it. As simple as that. So if you're not an online person, there's a lot of networking. I used to go to like three networking events a week uh, when I didn't know much about online marketing. I was still trying to figure it out. I was, you know, getting coaching from different people, learning different email marketing, online marketing stuff. But until then, I needed to generate opportunities. So I went to networking events. A any major town near you has these networking events and you can learn more about where they take place through websites like um, meetup.com. Okay. So if you go to meetup.com and um, uh, put things in place, uh, like this city, uh, city and zip code, it tells you what kind of meetings are, are taking place, business meetings. They're mostly free. 90% are free. You show up there, you talk to people and tell them you got started in the lending industry and you're looking for people who need capital, either startup capital or existing capital. You just need to commit to one or two those two things. Now, each one of these, we expand if you're in business lending blueprint, how we give you specific scripts and ideas as to how to do networking and how to do cold email, meaning that how do you find email addresses of the businesses and put it in full automation for the emails to go out to people. We show you if you want to run ads, like that we have people who are running, who are spending $2,000 a month, but they're making $40,000 a month through that with just zero, uh, one employee. Uh, that's them pretty much. Zero employees, that's the owner. Facebook organic strategy with the strategy I walk you through. We expand on this. LinkedIn, how do you take advantage of LinkedIn? We have categories of training uh, and systems in place uh, for you to get that done. But if you're doing this yourself, at least cling to this activity calendar. Just take a, take a picture of this and choose one of those options in the next 30 days and do it, you know? So we took care of the uh, time problem. We took care of the lead generation problem. So pretty much this is how the credit and the lending works and our business lending blueprint works. And we have a team, so it's not just me. So when you, if you do join Business Lending Blueprint, you're assigned to our onboarding team and they walk you through and they help you come up with a customized plan on how to succeed uh, because everybody's situation is different, right? So some of you come in looking for like an automated system to add to your existing business. Others are looking to uh, get out of your job pretty much and you need a few deals a month. So that requires different strategies. And, you know, we have a team backing me up. It's not a one person company that helps you. We have live coaching calls. Like every week you have a calendar of coaching calls that you can join uh, and ask your questions um, and, and, and get get help. And we have our content portal that's updated so you can go through content on your own pace and learn. We have live events. So we have a lot going on behind the scenes that I didn't really get a chance to talk about today because we covered a lot of ground. I mean, this was this wasn't I wasn't going to use this time to brag about ourselves, but to provide 
your information. But when you kind of look into business lending blueprint, it's a whole system. And that's not just one guy talking about alternative lending industry. So if you're considering, I highly, highly suggest that you join and take advantage of that. Like we mentioned in, in, in the beginning of that, a lot of the decisions that hurt you are decisions that you didn't make, not the ones that you made, right? So I invest in a lot of coaching myself, uh, but I, I know that even if I learn uh, 1% more than what I would have learned on my own, it still made a difference for me because I, I you know, it's we can figure out very little on our own. I think I'm assuming everyone on this call is extremely intelligent, but when it comes to growing businesses, making additional income, usually we're not brought up that way. You, know, you don't learn money strategies in elementary school, middle school, high school, college. On well, catching up on those when you're like 20, 30, 40, 50 years old, is extremely difficult. That's why it's very easy to model a system that already works for other people. Um, but yeah, again, that's your decision. But if you do join, I highly suggest that you book your onboarding call our onboarding team will reach out to you to customize your experience and what you're trying to accomplish um but yeah i'm glad that you guys joined me today with that um i uh i hope to see you again don't be afraid to comment back i'd love to get feedback from you i hope to see you in our community in 2024 you'll do great things either way but if you do join i'll uh, i'm looking forward to welcoming you so with that take care now